Suppose you want to develop an experimental plan to calibrate a pressure gauge of range 0 to 10 bar with total 10 readings in two replications. So these terms we will discuss in the theory class in more detail. So first step is, okay, we have to identify the range of the instrument. So that is 0 to 10 bar. So total 10 readings in two replications. So two replications, okay, so the replication means repeating the entire set of readings without uh, ensuring that all the variables, all the values are reset. So that is replication. So total 10 readings in two replications. So in one replication, we need only five readings. So five readings, we should cover the range of 0 to 10 bar. So now first question is whether 0 should be included or not. So depends on the pressure gauge. Some pressure gauges, 0 reading may not be possible. So if it is possible, then we have to include 0 also. So now let us assume 0 is not possible. So that's why I'm choosing. So, so we need total 10 readings. So first replication. Standard order is usually we write in increasing order. So the pressure varies from 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 2 to 10. 0 is not possible, that's why it is chosen that way. Then this is the first replication. And if you repeat the whole thing again, then 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, this is the second replication. So now we have to, so standard order is usually the increasing order. And the actual order in which you do the experiment is called the run order. So run order is the order in which you run the experiment. So now we have to generate a run order. So again, there are two methods. One is complete randomization. So the entire 10 runs can be randomized. Or we can do restricted randomization or blockwise randomization, that is, each block will be randomized separately. So now let us first do complete randomization. So here, first we write down the complete design. Then we allot 10 random numbers from 1 to 10. In the run order column, we can fill in randomly. So we can either use the DOE software, like Design Expert or Minitab, or R, etc. to for that. Or if you are using Excel, if you load the shuffle adding, then it is possible to generate random numbers using shuffle. You can shuffle a certain rows, or you can use random number tables. So there are some tables which have been generated, which can be used. Or uh, we can use our calculator in that the random number function is available. So after generating the random numbers, we have to sort to make the actual observation table. So why we should use random number generators? So several studies are shown. If you write manually, there is always some bias. We always have a tendency to favor certain numbers depending on the individual. And to avoid such bias, we should use random number generators using some method like this, uh, like software or you know, drawing lots is also good, or you can have a dice also, anything can be done. But you should not simply write down arbitrarily using your, uh, what comes to your mind. That does not result in a good distribution of random numbers. So on your calculator to generate random numbers, uh, in the old FX82, this is the procedure. Shift, ran, hash, and a random number will come. In the newer versions, I'm not really sure. Please see your manual and learn how to generate random numbers. So this is the old procedure, shift, ran, hash. So now, of course, there are, you can generate random numbers between 0 and 1, or you can generate integral numbers from 0 to a large number. 
both options are there. You have to choose the settings appropriately. So if you're using this random numbers between 0 and 1, so you may get 0, 0.1, 0 0.135, etc. So what is the maximum number you want? That is your maximum run number. So you multiply this random number, 0 0.99, whatever, to with this maximum run number, and then round up because we want to get the last number. So another method is you can make a sim column of random numbers between 0 and 1 and sort all rows according to this random number. So if you are using Excel and all, you can use this method. So in your table, you fill up with random numbers and then sort that table using um, the sort command in Excel. So this is, shows that. So you can fill up with random numbers here. And then the run order, you have to sort this whole table. So now, okay, first uh, this is the smallest number. So this should be run one, then run two, run three, etc. So this table which uh, gives the standard order and the variable, the independent variable values and the run order. This is called the pre-experimental plan. So if you see your uh, rough record and fire record, there will always be two tables, one table for pre-experimental plan and the next table will be the observation table. So when taking observations, so first we have to take observation corresponding to this one order one. So for convenience, we resort in terms of this one order and make another table. So that is your observation table. So run orders vary from one to 10 and standard order was the original standard order. corresponding values you can put here. And this will be the corresponding input pressure. Okay, these are nominal values. Sometimes input pressure is controllable. Sometimes uh, the output pressure is controllable. We adjust the input pressure so that the needle coincides with the, the dial, etc. So these values are actually nominal values. It can go for either input pressure or output pressure. And then corresponding readings will be noted down in this call. So this table is called the experimental plan. Now, is this run order satisfactory? So then we need a check. For example, if you are simply generating random number, there is a possibility that we may get the same run order as the standard order. So that is, the standard order is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The run order generated also could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Of course, the probability is very low, but there is always a possibility. So we have to check whether the run order is satisfactory or not. So how do we do that? So we plot a graph of the independent variable versus run order on the x-axis. And then this graph, there should not be any non-random pattern, any trend or increasing pattern or decreasing pattern, that's a trend pattern or a cyclic pattern, increasing and decreasing, etc. should not be there then the run order is satisfactory. If there is any such pattern, then you have to repeat the step. You have to generate random numbers once again and check for non, uh, whether the run order is satisfactory once again. So for the previous data, uh, this is the graph pressure versus run order. And okay, there's a slight increase. Ideally, it should be horizontal. There should not be any trend. Okay, depending on for with small sample sizes, there is always, it's very difficult to get a perfect run order. <clears throat> so you may have to, this may be acceptable. So this was for complete randomization. So that is, the entire run order was randomized. So now we will consider blockwise randomization. Here we Randomize each block separately. So we first write down the complete design. Then 
generate run order from 1 to 5 for the first block. So we randomize only block 1, then generate another run order from 1 to 5 for second block. Then the second block run orders, so now they are from 1 to 5, so we, had, we need to get it to 6 to 10. So we add 5 to each to get 6 to 10. So that is this incrementation step. Then finally we sort to get the observation table. So this is your pretty expensive plan. So we generate run orders from 1 to 5 for first set, another 1 to 5 for second set. Now add 5 to each in the second set to get 8, 6, 9, 7, 10. That's it. So now this is the complete run order. So now we can sort that table in terms of run order. So we first write run order. This is the independent variable that you are adjusting. And so run order 1 corresponded to pressure 8. So now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, 6, 4, 10, 2. So this is the first block. Then 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 is the second block. So the pressures are 4, 8, 2, 6, 10. So we will take readings according to this order and the observations will be filled on the right side. So this table is called the experimental plan. So now we have randomized only block wise. Each block was randomized separately. So now we have to check whether the run order is satisfactory. So using block wise randomization. So usually block wise randomization will give better results. Because we are not, if you are doing complete randomization, there is a possibility that 2, uh, 10 may be lost and 2, uh, two is maybe in the beginning. So such possibilities are excluded if you do <coughs> blockwise randomization. So restricted randomization gives more balanced run orders. It also permits estimation of interblock differences. So you can compare the average in one block with the average in another block. And there should not be too much difference between the two blocks. So suppose you are doing an experiment on day one and day two. So block one you can do on day one, block two you can do on day two. And if there is a difference between the two blocks, then that shows that there is some other variable which has changed during between day one and day two. So that will give some idea, some indication of that, that there is a, some variable which is affecting your experiment and which you have not controlled properly. So now uh, you can do this exercise. We'll do it in Edu server to uh, develop an experiment plan to calibrate an ABDD of range as given below with total 12 readings in two replications. Look at that. The do server will give you values for different ranges in random order. Okay, so with that, we'll complete the presentation on how to randomize one orders.